What is up everyone, Bradley Jack Design here, back again with another design breakdown. This time we're going to take a look at this lovely Obi Toppin design I created after the, I think, first Knicks game this year. Played great, big Obi Toppin fan, I collect Obi Toppin cards, got one right here. You know, I'm a really bought in on Obi as a player overall, so wanted to make a graphic based on this awesome photo, so... I'm going to break it down and show you <clears throat> how you can make a design like this and create some of these effects. So this is the final. I'm going to turn that off. We're going to start at the bottom, start with the background. So let me think of how I actually built this so I can show you sort of step by step. So first it starts off with a photo. So I've got this photo here. Uh, this is the unedited photo. This is the edited photo. So you can see right away. Big difference. Let me hop in here, see if we did anything here. Let me see if we did anything in here. Okay, so here are all the edits we did. Standard edits I do on a lot of my stuff, if you've seen it. I used my yellow fix filter um, action, and I added actually a color layer of the original image on here. And that was just to sort of reset the colors back to what they should be. Um, and then I've got a couple layers just fixing some of the edges. So I took that, I added a selective color layer on top of it, which brightened everything up. So I think if I go to the whites, I took away black or brightened everything. But it's only brightening the whites, because we're in the white tier. So, that's a fun thing you can do. If you just want to brighten the whites, you can do that with a select color layer. I'm sure there's a bunch of different ways to do it. That's why I did it on here. So I've got Obi here. Um, I wanted to create a background. And the whole conceit of what I wanted to do with this is so I wanted to play with blurs and graininess. So that's that was my goal for this design. So background here, I've got two just gradients of black basically covering up orange or orange coming into the center. From the sides i've got a blur gallery on these um and i also added noise and with the blur gallery you can't really see what it does and let me let me uh disable this layer mask and disable this layer mask so these are what the layers are so they look like this they're just duplicated on top of each other but they usually just look like this which is fine, it's just a gradient. What I did was I added noise, which is gonna give it some texture, and I used a blur gallery filter of a tilt shift to blur it even more, um, just to blur up these edges a bit. And this should be at a different angle, but it's at this angle apparently. But if you use a tilt shift blur, you can add grain to it. So I was adding grain in two ways um, with the blur filter. So if I turn off noise, so this is the grain added, and then I added some more noise which adds a little bit more noise as well. So I have two of these layers, just so it was um, multiplied and duplicated twice more intense. I then just made gradients um, that came across the front like this, like this gradient here. And then I actually applied a noise or grain filter to the mask. So this is the mask itself. So it's super grainy. Again, I wanted to play with grain see how I can use grain in this design. So I not only added noise and grain to the original image, I added it to the uh, mask as well to make the gradient and mask grainy as well. And then added some white on the top end here and did the same thing. I added a little bit of noise to that because I wanted something in that corner. It looked a little odd at the end. So that's the background. So then I've got just some text. You know, some plain text just says OB. If I go in, it's basically just OB repeated with a, the same gradient overlay. It's got two gradient overlays on it. One from the bottom to make the bottom darker and the other one to apparently do nothing. So we'll ignore that. So I've got the OB in the background like this. And then on top of it, I have it duplicated and I have a blur gallery setting to that and I might have had it set to this one too maybe maybe not 
We'll see at the end. Let's see what our final looks like. So I might have had it applied to both. Okay. So basically, these are the settings that I used and I repeated these on a lot of these layers where I have noise added and a blur gallery filter. And again, it's that same tilt shift blur. So to tilt shift blur, this one's set to 100 and the grain amount is, you know, 17 and a half. And I played around with these settings, I'm sure, nonsensically. But basically, I wanted it so the OB bled into or... Yeah, bled into this background area here. And that's where I adjusted this layer of using the tilt shift to do that. Because I wanted it all to blend out to the back. Then all these layers essentially are accentuating that. And then some layers are set to screen to brighten it up a bit. Let me turn the blur gallery on here. When you turn it on, it looks like that. These are both set to screen. Let's take a look at the final real quick. Okay, I might have had one of these not set to screen or not not set to blur, just so we can kind of actually see the obi. But we'll see what happens when I turn these on. Yeah, so then this is just another duplicated layer. Uh, Gaussian blurred. So these don't have the tilt shift blur. These are just to make it glow more. Because if you blur something and set it to screen, it kind of helps it glow. And these just have two Gaussian blurs on it. Um, and these layers actually are masked out from the middle. So I wanted it to be brighter on the top and bottom edges because those are hitting the orange areas. Um, so emulating light, you know, the, the middle has this big dark black line going through it. So I wanted to emulate that. So that's how we did the background text. So since we have this stuff in the background, you know, I added a NYX logo here, <clears throat> and this is actually a couple NYX logos. I think they're just basically set to screen on top, and one set to multiply to darken it back up. Nothing real special. It kind of just has like a glow to it, and I duplicated that and set it to Gaussian Blur as well to blur up the NYX logo a bit. So, what do we got next? Let's see, let's see. Okay, let's add these light trails. So I downloaded these, this asset here. It's several assets, actually. Um, what it is, it is a frame from an animation I downloaded from Footage Crate. So this is just this swipe. It's just this swipe animation. And you can make this yourself pretty easily, really, if you just use a brush that is smaller on the edges than it is in the middle and then gave it an outer glow, it would do the same thing. But I took that, duplicated it, so there were three of them to make it seem like three were swiping, and lined it up and manipulated it so it was coming off of this ball. Now, I had an interesting time trying to figure out where his arm is actually moving to make this look realistic, and I landed on this. So I've got this first one set to normal. The second one, I have a blur gallery on it, and this is the same tilt shift blur. It's keeping what I want in focus. So I want it more in focus by the ball and then it blurs out from there. I then have that same layer applied on top of it. And this is set to overlay. This whole layer is set to overlay. So when I do that, it bleeds out this way. And actually I think I have the blur gallery on the bottom layer too, because it, it trails off, you know, it's sort of like rocket ship trails. So that's what I wanted to have the effect of. If we turn the final on, you can see that's what we've got going on. Good. <laughs> so since we have these light trails in the back, I needed to make sure that the light was also hitting Obi. So I've got a couple layers on here. I've got one layer that's just brightening up the edges. Let's zoom in so we can take a look at this. <clears throat> this is a curves layer with the bottom moved up and it is not affecting the bottom layers. Hold on, let me go here. So if you double click the blend if, I moved it over to about 77. Uh, I then duplicated that layer, but I tweaked some of the RGB channels. So when I turn this on, it's a little bit of blue. And this is done on the bottom mainly, because that's where these blue are affecting. So this I would have used the same mask, but I would have painted off areas up here that aren't in direct contact with that. So if I turn it on and off, you can see I'm trying to figure out where the light is going to hit from these, if these are emitting light. 
And then I have a couple layers here. I have a layer set to color and a layer set to overlay. And the color layer is set to 20%. So if I turn that on, you can't really see what it's doing. But basically, anything that I think is going to be touched by that light, I painted this blue. And then if I set it to overlay, if I turn that on, this is the same layer, just set to overlay at 100%. So I painted here, painted underneath his fingers, painted on the shorts here, under here, up here front of his jersey, really bottom of his hand, and the side of the ball. I also then painted on the top of his uh, calf here, because it'd be hitting here, and then over here on his leg as well, and on his shoes. So those layers, those color layers, really help sell that this is emitting light and touching Obi. So then what we have going on here. So then I have, I duplicated the layer. So this is just the... This is just Obi um, duplicated. This whole thing is set to screen and I have a gradient map on top of it to make it black and white. Basically what this is doing is it's just adding a little bit of brightness back to some specific areas. And then on top of all of this, I have a layer that is just white. You can see it's just white here that I masked to the inside of Obi, just like I, I Mashed it to OB, contracted like two pixels, um, feathered it two and a half pixels, and then I masked it even more, apparently, as I can see here. And then I masked out certain areas I didn't want to get hit by this white. I wanted to really have just big light behind him so it would basically fold around him. So that's why I have this white on there. Let's see what we got going on next. So now I have this other OB on top. And this OB is, I believe, all of the stuff below. It's everything we just did as a smart object because I wanted to add a blur gallery of path blurs to this. So anywhere he's moving, I wanted to have his body blurring at that natural state. So his knees going up, his arm is swinging up. You know, I'm following the exact motion of the light trails and only applying it here. I have his arm swinging down or swinging up. So I've got those three paths, and those are only masked to these areas. So only these areas are showing it, and it's pretty much just his arm. His arm here with the ball, his other arm here, and then his leg here. And then maybe a little bit down here at the toe. So that's what we added there. Uh, we got some swooshes going on here. So these are assets I downloaded from Footage Crate. Uh, let me give this a black background. So it's just an asset that looks like this. It's like an anime, anime swoosh. So I didn't make this, but I used it well enough, and I've got two of them on here. So you, this is, and I say that because you don't have to make everything. If you can find assets that work for you, like these swooshes, then you can get it to work. I've got some at the bottom here across his shoe here, and I think it's the same one. It's a different frame, but it's the same animation. It's actually a ping animation with like, I don't know, 100 pings. So I went and found the ones I wanted and put them in front and I masked them appropriately. So some were coming across his body, some were going behind to add depth. And these are set to screen because I added noise and a Gaussian blur to them. Well, there's two layers. There's the base layer, which looks like this. And then the top layer I have set to screen, which is gonna give it a little bit of noise and it's gonna make it glow a little bit more. I then have some dust on top. So I just have some dust assets so this is a dust asset I have that I put on top. I duplicated it and rotated it around. So we've got two of them basically here mirroring. Tweak the levels layer so it got rid of some of the fogginess of them. And these layers are set to screen so only the white is showing through. Uh, I threw my logo down here at the bottom. I also Gaussian blurred it because I wanted everything to have the same blur. So I just put a little, little bit of a blur on it. And with a smart filter mask, I masked out specific areas or, or masked back in areas I wanted to be blurred, mainly the edges. And then added some stats and did the same thing with those blurs. So I've got just his name up at the top and then um, the stats here, stats on top. Hold on, stats, here they are. Well, these are all just one thing. Pretty simple, you know, it's just, let's hop in here. It's a lot of smart objects here. So it's just text. I have gradient layers on all of these and then just minutes in front of, or the name in front of the, the number that it's associated with. 
I then have on this, I have it as a smart object where I added that same noise. So it has that grittiness and that noise. Um, and then I basically duplicated that to lighten up certain parts, but apparently it's only the top part here on minutes. <laughs> I don't know why. Apparently that's what it is. But I basically made all the text smart objects so I could blur it just because everything else is blurred. The edges are blurred of this. This is blurred. This is blurred. I wanted that to be the theme, which is what I told you guys at the beginning. So we'll zoom out here. And we'll go to light leak. So I just added a, an easy light leak. This is one of Ethan J Design's light leaks. I really like this one. I use it a lot. Put it around the edges. <clears throat> Let's see where it is in whole. There. So I stretched it up a bit so you didn't see all this stuff at the top. So it's really just hitting the edges, not a lot of content in the middle. And then I have a levels layer to get rid of some of the fogginess so you can see what I actually did and made. Then I just have some final tweaks to this, which is camera raw. So if I turn this on, you can see just a lot of camera raw that I did. So let's take a look and see what I did in here. I basically increased the contrast, decreased the highlights decrease the whites, decrease the blacks, increase the texture and clarity because we already have so much grain. Might as well add some more texture and clarity. Added some vibrance just for fun. Um, and that's it. That's actually all I did. I didn't even add any more grain. But you can see if I turn that off and on, you can see it's basically adding a ton of contrast, a ton of detail. But it looks like I missed something somewhere because you can see this is without anything and this is with it and without. So let me see what's in here, actually. I'm actually kind of confused as to why that's going on. Maybe I missed a layer. Let's take a look. Might not have. But it just seems like I'm missing something. Well, that's weird. Hmm. Oh, well. Original Obi. Edited Obi. With camera raw. I'm actually perplexed as to what that was. Oh well. I must have done something to increase the contrast and not actually applied it. Kind of confused. Maybe there's some overlay that I deleted on accident. Oh well. Well, that's the Obi Top in design with, I guess, a couple things missing, but all in all, you can get the essence of how I made this. Playing around with and experimenting with blurs. That's something I try and do when I make a design is just have sort of a goal. So the goal for this was play with blurs, play with grains, play with tilt shift blurs, see what you can do with them. And this is the result. It basically set up a great, beautiful background for this OB photo that I have with some slight editing of the lighting on it, which really sells um, and really makes this graphic look awesome. This is one of my favorite things I've ever made. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown. If you guys have any other suggestions for tutorials or breakdowns you want to see, you can always let me know on Instagram um, or you can hop into my Discord as well and let me know what you think there. Um, if you have any questions, again, feel free to reach out. Um, other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you for watching.